There are two main features built into our systems that the majority of our customers use, and that's uh, remote viewing and motion activated recording, which is what we're going to discuss right now. Um, there are two main benefits to motion activated recording. First, it maximizes your hard drive space. And second, it makes for efficient playback, so that you're not sitting there watching, you know, um, endless video of nothing going on. You can go from one motion clip to another very efficiently, and it helps identify or find events quickly, very quickly. But first, let's talk about how it works. So we have our camera, we have a video recorder, and we have a monitor. High definition uh, cameras constantly feed the video to the video recorder. You might have one camera, you can have up to 32 on our systems. They're all feeding high definition video constantly streaming to the recorder. It's the recorder that's intelligent and detects motion. The camera is not intelligent. Its only job 24 hours a day is to feed video. That's it. Um, the recorder has algorithms built into it. On each camera, it's monitoring the pixels coming in from the camera, and the algorithms are so refined and so powerful, it can detect when there's motion. Not just when there's change. You'll get change when a, when a cloud goes over the sun. All the pixels will randomly change. The algorithms can detect a group of, of pixels changing and what directions they're moving in, and it knows to trigger motion recording. Because the recorder is monitoring the pixels, there's no limitation to the distance of motion recording. The camera can be wide angle and viewing something like that, and whatever the camera sees at this distance, the pixels are feeding back to the recorder and it detects motion when it's programmed to. If you have a long range lens that goes way out here, it's still detecting just the pixels seen out at this distance, and again, it efficiently detects motion even at the longer distance. Now the system is intelligent so that it knows once it, it detects motion it can actually go back and grab the five seconds before motion was detected and add it onto the video clip. We hear a lot of people say I don't want to use motion recording, I don't want to miss anything. That feature right there ensures that you don't miss anything. So you've got the, you've got the pixels coming in the, the algorithms are monitoring the camera's video and it, it's triggering recording when it detects motion. But we need more control over that. These cameras are outdoors, the environment is changing, there's a lot of areas and, and different applications that, that you've got to have some control over. So the next step is being able to select the areas that detect motion. And that's what our systems do. So you can pull each camera up on a monitor and then you can select the areas that trigger motion. Well, how would you use that? Here's, here's one example for residential. Let's say you want to watch the front of your house and you've got a busy street out front and cars are going up and down. So let's draw that. Let's say here is your driveway and this is the street and you've got cars going this way and you've got cars going this way. And you don't want to record that all day long. It eats up your hard drive and it doesn't matter. But you do want to know if someone walks onto your grass or pulls into your driveway. And so you can actually pull the camera up to full screen, take the mouse, and draw boxes and say, you know what, in this area right here, when there's motion detected, I want it to record. And it will do that. Each, it will ignore the cars going up and down the street, and the minute someone walks onto your grass in the detection area, it will trigger. You can have multiple detection areas. You can say, you know what, I want it right here too. I want to detect that area. But maybe there's a tree over here, you don't want that, but you do want it down here. Okay? So you can set up multiple detection areas and ignore the areas that would trigger a false recording. That's the second level of adjustment on motion recording that makes it so powerful. The third adjustment is sensitivity. You need sensitivity because, for example, let's say that big tree that you have over in the corner, it's out of the detection area, but it does have a shadow, and the sun does come out. And so the sun comes out, and the shadow may move into the detection area, and if you've got it set up too high, the shadow, when the wind blows, will trigger it. And so you reduce the sensitivity level, and you test it by going out and walking, and, uh, and making sure that it triggers when you walk, but it doesn't when the wind's blowing. Um, 
The fourth level of adjustment is scheduling. At my home, I have all my cameras recording motion 24 hours a day, and it works beautifully. Not once have I missed anything. It's very effective, and I can go back and play back stuff in just a few minutes and find instances of um, you know, whatever it is I'm looking for. But there are instances such as, um, let's say a retail store, where you open up at 9 a.m. and you're open until 10 p.m. And the minute you open, you got 50 people in your store. And there's just movement left and right. You want these cameras recording constantly. I completely agree with you. But after hours, there's nothing going on. So you can set up a motion recording schedule. So it's recording constantly during the day. And after you close the store, it goes to motion activated recording so that you're not eating up your hard drive when there's nothing going on. But if something does move in the middle of the night, you've got it on video because the motion activated recording triggered. If you're using that and you close up a store and you got cameras inside, you probably don't set up detection areas. You just let the whole camera, anything in the whole field of view, you want it to trigger. It's really just that simple. So you have all these adjustments with motion activated recording to really dial it in and make it effective. There's another feature called uh, uh, remote motion alerts where you can when motion is detected during a certain time period on a certain camera you can uh, send an email out with a picture of what triggered it now it doesn't send the whole video out why because HD video is huge data and it would just slow the whole thing down so it alerts you hey here's what triggered it and you can remotely log on and play back video to see the whole clip on what happened there. so main benefits Main benefits are first, it maximizes your hard drive space. You have to keep in mind high definition video is a huge amount of data. And you have one, four, ten high definition cameras constantly streaming into the video recorder. So you're going to need a lot of storage space. And so what we recommend is one terabyte for every four cameras. That will give you five to seven days of continuous recording. But just by turning on the motion activated recording, you can take that five to seven days and turn it into three weeks. You can, if that's not enough for you, and it depends on how much movement there is. Every system's different. And so you have to kind of calculate it in once it's installed and adjusted. But let's say you want to double it, you just increase the size of your hard, your, your hard drive from one terabyte to two or to four. Or you add another hard drive in. You can, in a lot of our systems, you can put two hard drives in and it will just record from one hard drive to another, and then when both hard drives fill up, it'll go back to the oldest clips, delete them, and continue to record. So you always have this running, you know, two, four weeks of recording at all times. The playback is efficient, because you're not sitting there watching a bunch of video, and you're going fast forward, reverse, fast forward, fast forward, and just sitting there staring at the video while it's going. You simply, with our systems, you go and you select the cameras you want to play back, and you can play multiple cameras back at the same time on motion activated. So you're watching all the cameras, and when there's movement, one or two cameras are moving and the others aren't, and when there's motion on those, they start playing. And then when you see what you're looking for, you click on that camera, it comes to full screen. You can go start and stop, it records it, it puts it to a thumb drive, it's got the time and date stamp on it, and it moves. It's really effective. Now let's talk about the limitations. The limitations, as, as, as refined as motion recording is at this day and age, you still have to understand this is outdoors. You don't put alarm systems outdoor and have the police respond with an outdoor alarm. Okay? And why? Because there's too many variables that can impact uh, triggering an alarm. You could have something like a big gust of wind blow paper through your yard. That may trigger it. Um, you might have a, a, a bird fly in front of the camera. If it's close enough, it's going to look like an elephant ran through your yard and it's going to trigger motion recording. So what happens is you initially set up motion recording and then you dial it in. You, you give it a little bit of time and you pay attention to where the false recordings are, are being triggered and how they're being triggered and you either adjust the sensitivity or you adjust your detection areas until you get it dialed into where it's working just the way you want. So motion activated recording, two thumbs up. Um, highly recommend using it to maximize your hard drive space and reduce the amount of time on playback.